As anyone who's ever beaten up a chicken in a Zelda game can tell you, not all video games will stand idly by and let you act like a jackass for no reason. Some games bypass the standard cumulative karmic morality system and jump straight to punishing you for stepping out of line, be it through insulting you, killing you, or straight up deleting your save games. Let's remember these times video games caught us needlessly being a jerk and punished us for it. You think your job is tough? Spare a thought for the poor shopkeepers trying to scratch out an honest living in Spelunky's network of mines and caves. They're there literally minding their own business, but there's always one greedy Spelunker who doesn't fancy paying for the selection of fine wares available. Options for filthy thieves include simply grabbing an item and legging it. Or worse, killing the poor salesman outright, perhaps with his own shotgun and completely cleaning the guy out. one occasion where the customer isn't always right? Shoplift at your peril though, because the shopkeeper is a tenacious guy who goes absolutely ape if you try anything funny, pinballing around the level, firing buckshot and screaming the word terrorist. Survive that onslaught and you might be feeling like a master criminal, devoid of remorse for your terrible, terrible acts. Well, prepare for swift karmic retribution. Turns out the shopkeepers are unionised, and you'll find that the exit to every level from now on has an irate shopkeeper guarding it. Maybe just stick to stealing from vengeful gods from now on. That always works out well. It belongs in a museum. Sure it does. No problem, sir. The guy's gonna sell two million bucks for a shitty old sword. Well, if he doesn't, just get it. Even if things get dirty. If he doesn't, I need to apply the touch. You got the touch! Goddamn right! It turns out the Shadow Warrior series isn't just a vehicle for Asian stereotypes. It's also the worst thing to happen to rabbits since myxomatosis. Shadow Warrior, for some reason, decorates some of its levels with amorous rabbits, and this being a game with an arsenal of over-the-top weaponry, there's always the option for jerk players to interrupt their romantic moment. Even the original 1997 game gave you the option of murdering defenseless bunnies and kicking their heads around like fluffy footballs. I'm getting horrible flashbacks to Watership Down. Kill enough of these guys though, and there's a chance that a black demon bunny will spawn complete with a death metal soundtrack, firing lethal sparks directly into your bunny bashing face. There is a chance that you can survive the onslaught and kill your furry assailant, at which point he drops a demon heart. But I think we all know the real demon heart is yours. So he's got skills? He's a born writer, man. He'll get us up. Yeah, but can he brawl? Don't matter how much talent he's got if he gets wrecked. That's what we're about to find out. Seminal 70s gang movie The Warriors is all about the importance of loyalty, brotherhood, and strong waistcoat games. The Warriors PS2 game, based on the film, follows the same plot, which sees the gang in hostile territory and hunted by every other gang in New York as they attempt to make their way from the Bronx back to Coney Island. In the face of those insurmountable odds then, it's probably not a good idea to behave like a dick and turn on your fellow warriors, no matter how repellent Ajax is. Ajax, ditch the chick, we need your muscle. The destroyers are hitting us again. All right, warlord. Maybe now I'll see some real action. Seriously, why do we keep that guy around again? If you do decide to thump a member of the Warriors, you'll quickly regret it as your former allies turn on you and beat the stuffing out of you. They hit harder than any of the actual enemies you face in the game too. And considering the Baseball Fury's whole deal is hitting you with baseball bats, that's saying something. Who the hell are these dudes? If you think your buddies will pull their punches just because you're wearing Warriors colours, then you're gravely mistaken. It is entirely possible to get completely knocked out by your own gangmates. Weirdly though, if you have some of the health item flash on you, they will still revive you afterwards as you lie there bleeding. You can make it, Thanks, come soldier. on, take I this. Needed that. Still gonna be super awkward in the clubhouse tonight though, just saying.
Japanese game Clock Tower managed the almost impossible feat of being both a point-and-click adventure and a terrifying horror game. Itkatsu is Jennifer, one of a group of orphans adopted by a reclusive millionaire called Simon Barrow and sent to live in his mansion, the Clock Tower. Unfortunately, the corridors are stalked by a horrifying, murderous creature called Scissorman. I'm sure you can guess what his whole deal is. No, not chainsaws, but we're getting close. Yes, Scissorman is a constant threat, wandering around with a giant pair of garden shears looking for human necks to prune. If you're going to complete the game, you're going to have to endure several near-death brushes with him. Actually, that's not strictly true. You see, if you're happy to abandon your morals and leave your fellow orphans to their horrible fate, you can simply drive away in a car. Maybe Scissorman just wants to give them a nice haircut. You don't know. All you have to do to escape is grab the key from the crate in the barn and use it on the car. The first couple of times Jennifer will resist because she doesn't want to leave her friends behind, but try a third time and she'll hop in the driver's seat and gun it, crashing through the barn door. Finally, a horror game where the hero just drives away. I mean, that's always been my plan. Any doubts about the legitimacy of this strategy disappear as the end credits roll, allowing you to enjoy them in the smug satisfaction that you outwitted your monstrous foe. But before you can start pondering the trade-in value of your game, this happens. Surprise! You can't get away with being a total jerk because all horror stories are also allegorical moral fables. I thought you knew that. The chief antagonist in Banjo-Kazooie is Grunty, or to give her her full name, Gruntilda Winky Bunyan. Which, I mean, how would you even get one of those on one of those? Grunty is irritable, vain, and speaks entirely in rhyme, which means if her plan to steal the youth and beauty of Banjo's sister via her beauty transfer machine falls apart, she'll at least be able to drop the most fire rap album of 1998. <laughs> If there's one thing that annoys Grunty more than her lack of Tinder matches though, it's cheating. If you enter two cheats in the game's code entering Sandcastle, that's fine. But enter a third and Grunty will delete your save game. Permanently. Who knew that the Wicked Witch of Spiral Mountain was such an arbiter of fair play? We're still not clear on why, if Grunty has the power to delete save games, she doesn't just do it to everyone right before the final boss fight. But still though, this is harsh punishment for experimenting with the cheats in a family-friendly cartoon platformer. At least receiving bad news in rhyme softens the blow. Like this. Spread the news far and wide. Regrettably, your dog has died. See? Much better. I am Cookie Masterson, and not to brag, but the cashier at Trader Joe's complimented me on my choices today. You Don't Know Jack is a quiz game that prides itself on its raucous, irreverent attitude. But just because it seems like quiz game's fun uncle, don't for one second think that that means it condones swearing. The series has a long history of punishing you for needless swearing, most recently seen in the 2015 version of the game, in which entering your name as f you would result in the host subtracting a thousand dollars from your score before the game had even begun. Player one, you think you're real funny, don't you? F me, f you. I'm taking away a thousand bucks. The game would also change your name so you could carry on with a non-swear as your title and enjoy all the fun quiz shenanigans an interactive trivia game has to offer. Or. Or, and hear me out here, what if we restarted the game and changed our name back to f you? That would really show the game, right? Nope. In fact, the host remembers that you've done it previously and subtracts $50,000 from your score. Player one? Okay, telling me to f myself once is one thing, but twice? Hey, guess what? Minus 50,000. No, you know what? Not enough. Minus 50,000 and one. That's how you're starting. Minus 50,000 and one. And one, sorry, 50,000 and one. 
That seems like a pretty harsh punishment, so, I mean, probably no harm in restarting and changing our name back to f you a third time. What else could they do? Player one? Okay, look, I'm, I'm not just gonna be repeatedly told to f myself. So, tell you what I'm gonna do, you're getting a goat. Yeah, that's it. Game over. Here's a goat. Enjoy. <laughs> me. Ah, a little rough, don't you think? Now, I'm sure you can think of lots of reasons for wanting to shoot Lewis Serra in Resident Evil 4. That waistcoat, for a start. I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics, too. How rude! However, when the two of you are trapped in a cabin, fighting off hordes of angry ganados, it's probably in your best interests to work with him to try to repel the advancing horde. Oh, oh, excuse me, your highness. I know, I know, but he throws you ammo and does his fair share of shooting, so really, if you don't want to be a jerk, you should leave him alone. Also, if you do turn on Lewis, or even hit him too many times accidentally, this happens. <laughs> Adios, Leon. <laughs> and yet, we still prefer him over Ashley. All right, so those were the times that video games punished you for needlessly being a jerk. But do you know what would be a jerk move? Not clicking on one of these two sets of videos. The top ones are from us at Outside Xbox, and the bottom ones are from Outside Extra. And you can also subscribe using this subscribe orb. We don't actually have any kind of punishment if you don't click on them. Probably just cry a bit. See you next time.